This time I'm taking a look at a post by Sheehan Pereira on their blog EMS Root. Once again, massive thanks to Andrew for today's Friday Intune newsletter. If you haven't subscribed to that yet, you're missing out. So quickly over to this blog. It's all about protecting Intune from misuse, whether that's accidental or malicious. The feature is called multi-admin approvals, and right now it's in public preview. Multi-admin approvals is designed to allow you to protect specific elements of your Intune environment by ensuring that any action by a specific set of administrators is verified by at least one additional admin. At the moment, it's limited to just apps and scripts, but even with just those, I can imagine the great use case. Let's say you have Susie Apper. They're an app developer from an external company who are helping with app creation and development. We need to give them some permission to manage apps and ideally deploy them. Until now, role-based access control allowed us to limit what Susie could do and who they could deploy the apps to. Now, with multi-administrator approval, Susie can manage any app they need to, provided a second admin approves the change. Let's take a quick look at how it's all put together. Okay, so over to the Intune homepage. Well, we're gonna take a quick look at uh, tenant admin and then roles. I'm just gonna quickly show you, we've got the app administrator here, or the app manager, and we have this assigned already to app managers. And in app managers, we have Susie who can do some things. She can do uh, any application management for all devices and all users. Now, if we leave it just at that, then Susie can do any app management for all devices and all users, which may be perfectly good. But in this use case, I want to restrict it so that every time Susie does manage an application or create or edit or do something with an app, I know about it and I have to approve it. So let's take a look at how we do that. Back to the tenant admin, down to multi app admin approval, over to access policies, and then we can just create one. We can choose create, call it app. MAA, and we're going to change the profile type to apps. Obviously, write a description so that you're able to identify this in the future. And the tooltip says uh, an app policy will limit an, any action on an app. And these include create, edit, assign, and delete. Let's choose next. And we get the approvers list. So, simply a case here of choosing the groups of users who are able to approve an application change. So, in this case, I yeah, called it app MMA approvers. Do that and choose select next and create. All good. So just log in as Susie now. I'm going to head over to apps, choose all apps, add. I'm going to go for an app type of, well, the new store app will be a good start. Just search for Slack. Next next and you can see we've got an additional step here so rather than just that thing i did last week where i just deployed the application straight away we have some additional information right so we've got the all the all the standard information you get around the application but right at the top we've got before this resource can be created it must be approved by another admin before you can submit this request you must in enter your business justification so deploying slack would be my justification any more information there? No, we'll just submit for approval. And the change request has been submitted. Perfect. Let's jump over to the other screen. So back to my admin screen, received request, refresh that. And you can see we've got a request submitted around about now. And the operation was created. And you can see the business justification is deploying Slack by Suzy Apper. And the status is that it needs approval. So Clicking into that business justification, we get the information, all of the information around this change. You can see that the data type is a WinGet app, and we are deploying the Slack application, running as the user, and that's the package identifier, that's the information that we've specified. Now, interestingly, you'll notice that this doesn't specify where we've deployed it to because Susie wasn't able to specify where this was being deployed to in the first step. She they just have the ability to get the application created and approved. So I add some approver notes. I'll spell correctly and we'll choose approve request. Refresh that and you can see that we have this request here, which has been now approved. So heading back to Susie's screen, we'll refresh the all apps and then jump back down to 
the Slack application, which is this one here. And you can see it says the application can be assigned to at least one group. This is the application that has just been approved by, uh, by me on the other side. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go to properties, scroll down to assignments, and we'll add all devices and choose review and save. And now we are asked for a business justification for deploying Slack again. So we're going to choose deploying Slack. And that's the information we're going to submit to the approver. We'll choose save and just jump back over to the approver screen and refresh these requests that have been received. We have another justification a few minutes later, which needs approval. We'll just look at that one now. And you can see that the operation is a sign for an application. We'll scroll down to see what information we get and how it looks. It is an app assignment with the intent of required directly to all devices, which is about right. There was no filters or filter types there at all. So just a case of saying that we approve. Obviously, when you do approve, if you have a change request process, put the change request number, all that information can be put in here. Choose approve request. Head back over to Susie's screen. And we look at Slack. And hopefully we'll see that the application has been assigned successfully. And yes, it has. Assigned is yes. Perfect. Okay, that's that. I can see that this capability might be instantly useful for organizations who just want a bit more control around who can deploy applications and, and how they can be changed. That additional information so that you can prevent an accidental change from taking place rather than just report on it in the future. So possibly a game-changing feature right here. It's in preview. As Sheehan says, this is probably going to change dramatically in the future when it becomes global globally available because they're going to add more features to it rather than just apps and scripts hopefully anyway see you next time